Hi, good morning, fellows. Uh, my name is Sandra Joe, and today my scientific English presentation is about diverse interaction between corals and coral killing sponge, the Terpios hatihinota. And the author was Jean Terwell, these guys. And this was published at March 2012. And what are corals? We all know that corals are the power plant in our big ocean since we study oceanography. And corals usually uh, stay, lives in tropical clear water which temperature is about 18 <coughs> Celsius. And it's the main energy resource in the ocean environment. It produces nutrients by undergo uh, the photosynthesis through the in their bodies. Okay. And uh, as the scientists found out that the coverage of corals has decreased, and they want to know why, because corals are really important in our ocean. So there's a really big disaster. N nearly 13% of the loss of coral coverage on some reefs was found in Guam in 1987. And almost 13% of coral coverage loss uh, along the 100 meter transect belt in Green Island, Taiwan, and was found in 2006. And the scientists have some question. Why are the coverage decreasing? Is it because the weather, or it is because the corals are sick, or maybe there's other answers. So then I want to, uh, so there are some coral diseases. Mainly there are 29 kinds of coral diseases, such as uh, the aspergillosis and the white pox disease and the black band disease, etc. And coral disease have specific infection of coral species. It means that usually one corals will only have one kind of disease that was caused by other species. Like uh, and uh, uh, the agents are usually bacteria, fungi, and protozo. It means that. Like only one kind of bacteria can affect one kind of corals. <clears throat> so, however, there's an expect exception. They found out that there's a kind of cyan bacteria sponge was found in 1993 that it can affect all kinds of corals. It's very strong that almost it can kill every kind of corals. And it was first widespread infection in Guam 1973 and then tell to Rikios and to Green Island. So what is the killing sponge? The killing sponge is Terpius Hoshinota, and this is the species name, and it's usually black and gray, as a spin shape uh, spicule. And the length of the spicule is about 245 mm, and the white is about 3 mm, and the head is about 5.6 mm wide. And it contains a high percentage of intercellular cyan bacteria, and it is called as coral black disease, like the black disease in the past, in the century time. And also it's grow on uh, Sertophilium and reefs. It's really weird and it's uncommon because usually these sponge, usually sponge won't grow on these places. And it even grows on the dead corals. And this is the picture of the killing sponge. So it's gray or black, and it's covered the coral spot and kills the corals. So the scientists want to know what is the interaction between corals and this kind of killing sponge. So is it that the cor coral killing sponge will pull up some toxic chemicals? Some scientists inform that. Uh, Brian in 1973 that says Terpias kills coral uh, for nutrient with tox toxic chemicals. Uh, next to the fungus corals, it is found that tentacles of the engine corals will quickly react, uh, retract, and die after 24 hours. This is the sort that makes Brian think that uh, it's it's the sponge that take out his toxic chemicals, so the corals will pull back his tentacles. Or is it occupied by overgrowing of the sponge that it takes over the spaces that the corals can live? Terpios moves forward by lateral uh, 
propagation extends in short fine tendrils across cerebus to new substrate. Means that uh, it moves his tissues to other spaces. And Turkios Hoshinata can develop tissue threads and set up the whole sheet of tissue to move over a shaded area and establish a new uh, territory. So the scientists start their field at observation. They start their observation at Green Island, and it was started at July 2010. 2010. Oh, no, it started started August 20, 2008 to July 2010. And Gong and the uh, and the point was set at Gongguan and Chaiko, and record by underwater camera to to uh, record the interaction between the corals and the sponge. And they use scuba diving from three point three to five meters. Oh, this is the mistype because I use a Mac. In depth of uh, 28 July 2010. And it was examined by the SEM, also known as the Scanning Electron Microscope. So this is the Green Island, and this two spot is the place that they do their research. And in Green Island, they find 19 species of celerate Tinian corals and one hydrozone coral. And they were sampled in two different clo colonies, which I which was in the Green Island, the two slot. And Turpio's coral specimens were sealed in plastic bag underwater when collected and preserved in fixative fixative once diver had left the water. So there are commonly four kind of the interaction that they found between corals and the sponge. And these three kinds are the most common ones. It's the hairy tips. This is the hairy tips that they were found to be occupied by cyan bacteria, sponge tissue, and spicules. And this is the SEM part of the uh, hairy tips. And then they found the thick tissue threads and the compact edge. And it's usually to uh, sponge, sponge together. So this the black part is the thick tissue threads, and the compact edge is the other side. So the thick tissue threads were an extension of sponge tissue, means that it covers over the corals. And the compact edge, it's revealed only spicules, but not sponge tissues or cyan bacteria intruding from the sponge front. So, and this is the SEM part of the thick tissues. So this is a chart about the hairy tips, thick tissue, threads, complex edges, and the disintegrated tissues. And the two sign, it means for two colonies that they do their researches. The, uh, the positive one means that they have this kind of interaction, and the negative one means they don't have it. And the top 19 one was the kind of corals they found first, then the last one is the other one. So there are 20 kinds of corals. And this is the this is the um, interaction between corals and sponge. So this is just the chart. So the conclusion they have is that hairy tips and contact edges were not the two most common features interaction. So we can see in the chart that uh, such as this turbid tissue. Mostly the only the only one have interaction is Milliflora excessas. And so so on for the thick tissue part, mostly have negative interaction. Only for uh Porgy, Silent Grill, and Poetis, Lutea, and uh, Stylophora Pistillata. I I feel like Harry Potter. And Hydonophora rigida and the Lactoria frigia and Plantigera rucianesis and the last one that's still the Millipora exesa and the second conclusion is that features of border between the two antagonists were not uniform among coral species it means that for the same species in different colony they don't have the same interaction means that the interaction is not really specific. So just the third point, interaction between corals and terpios are dynamic and also not species specific. 
just like in the past we said that most of the core diseases have specific uh, influence stuff. And the last part is that health status of the coral might also be a determined factor in terpios interfection. Interfection. It means that actually the coral's health or the coverage or the uh, growing stuff is also important about the disease infections. So this is the end of my report. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Explain my question. What is the scuba diving mean? Scuba diving means the diving project that you bring your CBD or and the oxygen on your back. So you can stay in the water for a long time. You don't have to get oxygen every time you dive. Arlene. Uh, I've been researching green algae and uh, I choose those two spots. Uh, why do I choose? Why do they choose the two spot of Green Island in Gongguan and Chai Ko? Uh, it's actually, I believe, it's because they found in 2006 that it was really threat that over 30 percent of the coverage of the corals was decreasing in these two spots. Leo. <coughs> It was like, uh, he wanted to know about the co toxic chemical part, but actually the, it is like a question, a theory that the scientists made. They don't know whether it's toxic chemical or it was the Occupy by, by overgrowing. So they made two space statements so they can do research to find out which kind of the answer is it. Okay, Vincent uh, Repeat this question. He wants to know what is the first point of the occupied by overgrowing. So I said that terpios move forward by lateral progression. It means that the <clears throat> terpios, the sponge, they extend their tissues, like tentacles, but not in old old part, not the whole not the whole tissue, but like they put out some tiny tissues, like the tentacles, to cover it. Like uh, the tissue can go through small holes, not just covered by a hole. Nina. So is this kind of terpio only in that uh, some in specific area? Because you just listed uh, three areas, like Ring Island and one and another one after us. Uh, no. Repeat. Uh, <laughs> uh, she wants to know, does this kind of sponge only be in specific spot that I listed, the three spot I listed in the report. And the answer is no, because it's a really strong sponge. It actually, it's over the planet, but why they took this three part, it's because this is the three, first, first three places that have, uh, have the place that the corals de decrease, so that the sponge was found. Alan, so please. Uh, well, uh Coral cure, once we found it was sick or it will die in 24 hours, like you say. Um, he wants to know whether the corals will die in 24 hours if it was infected by the, 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 the sponge. Wait, uh, okay. Alright, this is like, although uh, theories that they think about it, they want to know whether it is it, because in some kind of situation they found out when the fungi corals will interact with the sponge, the corals will quickly retract and die after 24 hours, but 
they are not sure if it's it's caused by the sponge or it's just the environment problem. Alicia, please. Could you go to the sponge coral border? You mean the picture one? Yeah, yeah. This one? Yeah, I don't know. This one? Yes. Yeah. Right. What is the minus uh, plus? Uh, the pop. She wants to know what is the positive and negative sign in the chart means. The positive sign means that uh, <coughs> the positive sign means there there is the heritage interaction with sponge and this kind of corals, and the negative part means they don't have it. And for the two signs, it means in two different colonies that were set in Green Island because they got the Chico spot and I forgot the other one. So you said in your material, you said you sent all from two colonies, and why is two colonies? It's two sides or something. Wait, what? In your material, you said you sent all from two colonies. Uh huh. And why is the colonies? It's two sides or something. The side of two colonies. The, the, the two colony, it's G and two Gon Gon and G and four Chai Kro. So one colony is for one side. It's actually I, the two spot, I answered this question before, the two spot that first found out the sponge was growing crazily, so they choose these two spot. Uh, like they don't really find other sponges when they want to do the research, and this two spot is the most disaster part. Okay, I cut the discussion here. All right, so um, uh, I think uh, Demer gave a very uh, fluent uh, talk. Uh, I think uh, he his introduction part was quite thorough and thought provoking. So I thought your your brain was uh, running with his uh, introduction, uh, and also from time to time he used his body language like. Uh, moving the tentacle, the sponge, and so on. So that would make uh, his uh, stage performance very active. Uh, but of course, I have some comment for him. So first of all, uh, as you can see from the slides, uh, I would say it's uh, a little bit uh, too wordy. So if I were here, I would definitely add more, because you're you were talking about corals, right? Corals are colorful, and in uh, uh, public science, uh, general science talk like this, I would definitely make my slides very colorful, full of uh, beautiful pictures. For example, I would use uh, pictures to introduce coral, coral disasters, coral disease, and sponge. And I think indeed he used uh, images to introduce sponge. It's usually said, one picture worth a thousand words. So when you show a picture, it's almost like you explain everything, right? You saw this, you see, ah, that's weird, because that's sponge. And uh, and then in this talk, there were uh, some terms which might be difficult for some of the audience. For example, I'm not a biologist, so for some words, I found it very difficult to understand, although I already checked it, but uh, I don't think everybody knows it. For example, what is a scripules? What is tendrils? What is threads? What is antagonist? These words might be familiar for students who like biology, but not for the others. So please think for the audience and explain, uh, explain the term when the term pop up you explain it right away. Like a spicule, you can explain it quickly with the, fold, uh, with the image, right? And, uh, and then uh, I think after this thorough uh, introduction, I would recommend that you add All right, here you have these uh, important two questions or two maybe hypotheses, I don't know. At the end, it would be great if you can add between slides 15 and 16, end of the study. So what's the purpose of this study? What kind of question that you or the, the, the authors wanted to answer? And of course, I hope that next time you can fix the problem. Oh.
okay? This, I know. So next time you can fix it. And then when it goes to your results, I found it PT because you your the way you introduce the most important results of the study was not enough. If I were you, can I edit? Um, I think it's stuck because the All right. If I were you, I would make the single image occupying the whole screen. Make it really, really large. Especially these SEN images. It's impossible to read this with the size here. Okay. And these are actually the eye catchers. So it's easy to draw people's attention. But you have to make the image really, really large. And because on SEN, uh, image, there are always difficult terms. For example, here you already uh, print out spicules or uh, where you have this. Like uh, what is tissue threads? If I were you, I would make the image really, really large and then I will print these keywords right next to the feature on the photo. So that the people, that the audience do not need to look back and forth to see, oh, where is SPQ, where is that feature on the photo. We can just look at this photo. <clears throat> and then, uh, I appreciate that you type this uh, table and spend maybe 30 seconds reading the names. But uh, actually, uh, I would say if uh, next time you have some time, maybe you can make a bar chart to show how what's the number of species uh, with this uh, border type. That's hairy tips. How many species uh, display this hairy tip? Okay. And how many? And how many? Because that's linked to your key conclusion, right? So like uh, most of these, uh, the major border type would be like uh, hairy tips or something. And then I would like to point out that uh, although it's a part of the author's original conclusion, I actually do not see the supporting data. How do you know the health status of the coral? Because I don't see any data saying this coral is sick, that coral is healthy. Uh, so how do they reach this conclusion that health status can be a determining factor? Okay, they, they right, you can explain right. next time. Okay. So how do they reach this conclusion? That means each of your conclusions should be supported by your data. Okay, but overall it's an enjoyable talk, so let's thank Deborah.